We're now going to have a look at uh, how we should deal with shots that bounce in front of us and the possible outcomes and the things we can do to deal with the ball. Now I want you to remember that we're looking at ideal world techniques and techniques that will help us retain possession of the ball. Now there are many factors that can affect this, uh, the weather conditions, the pitch conditions, you know, if it's wet, the ball will slip through, stay low. If it's a bit dry or you're on 4G. So there's many different uh, variations on what can happen. But what we're going to look at is situations where you can retain possession of the ball. Now, bear in mind, this won't always be the way that it is. This is going to be far from the ideal world. And at times you will have to improvise. But in this session, we're looking at techniques to help you retain possession of the ball. The decision to do that is yours. So what are the potential uh, outcomes of this? Well, we may be able to deal with the ball before it bounces, in which case danger averted. Next to that, we may be able to get to the bounce as it bounces, essentially trapping the ball against the floor. Next, we may get there just after it bounces, but we're close enough to the bounce to be relatively safe and, and retain possession of the ball. The next one is when we're a reasonable distance away from the bounce, we're not in a position where we can back off and react to what the bounce does. We're forced into dealing with it in a very uncomfortable and difficult situation. And then the next, or the second best outcome, if we can back away far enough from where the ball bounces, it gives us enough time to react to what the bounce does. Again, danger is averted. We're now going to look at the key features of each of these outcomes. So dealing with the shot that's bouncing in front of us, we need to get there before it bounces. It's all about getting the hands under the ball. Same as a scoop technique. We're looking to get both hands under, a little bit of a gap between them, and essentially the ball lands in our hands. Our forward momentum, we drop the chin, watch the ball all the way in, and collapse down on top of it. Now, if we can't get that forward momentum, or we can't get forward enough to get to it before it bounces, it may be we can get to it as it bounces. And essentially, as the ball pitches, our hands are directly behind it, and we take the sting out of the, uh, the shot by trapping it against the floor. Now, similar techniques to the cushion and catch in the scoop technique, in that we don't want to be maybe too accurate. We just take the sting out, the ball may just trickle away from us, but then we've got that forward momentum to finish down on top of the ball. So the next example is when we can't get to the pitch of the ball or before it bounces. Now what we're looking to do again is to maintain that forward momentum. We want to get the hands as close to the ball as possible in the scoop technique. A little bit of a gap between the hands to allow for any deviation in the bounce. And what we're trying to do is create an area where the ball will come into and stay. We may get it first time. If not, it drops down and we can gather it on the second attempt. Now to do that, this body must be forward. If the goalkeeper stays upright like this and the ball pitches, there's a chance that that ball's gonna hit him and bounce away. So we're looking to get the head over the top of the bounce. Now, as the ball bounces in, it may make contact with the arms, or worst case, the chest, and drop down straight in front of him, and we retain possession of the ball. And the key is, you don't have to be too accurate. You know, this is a very difficult ball to deal with. Sometimes the problem is that keepers try to be too accurate, a little bit of deviation on the bounce, it springs out or it pops off the chest. Just create that, that area, that space, on contact, close the arms, fall down on the ball. And the movement of the hands is also crucial when dealing with these bouncing shots and equally when using the scoop techniques. You know, some goalkeepers have a tendency to sort of wave their hands up before dropping them to deal with the football. Now, it's an unnecessary movement that can only cause problems. So avoid that kind of movement. Just offer your hands to the ball, keep them there, and with minimal movement, greater chance of success. Now we're gonna have a look at the bouncing shot in the situation where we can't get close to the bounce, nor have we got the time to back away and get a bit of space and reaction time from the bounce. And these are the key considerations you have to make. The techniques we adopt here are very similar to the previous situation where the ball is bouncing just in front of us. The difference is that because the ball is bouncing a little bit further away or, or quite a distance further away, the deviation on the flight after the bounce is going to be a little bit greater because we're further away from the bounce. And that means we need to create a bigger area, a bigger barrier. The principles do stay the same. We need that forward momentum. We want to get as close to the bounce as we possibly can. We want to try and get the head over the pitch of the ball so that if the ball pops up, it hits the chest and drops back down. And equally, we want the hands that's a little bit wider with a barrier of the legs so that if there is a sideways deviation on the movement, it's going to stay 
in front of us and we pick up the second ball. Again, this is one of those situations, trying to be too accurate is going to cause you problems. Trying to be too precise, thinking that the bounce is going to be consistent and just follow straight through is the danger. We need to create an area that's a little bit bigger while stopping it going past us, but as I say, allowing the ball to stay in front of us. With both the techniques of dealing with the ball that bounces just in front of us or a little bit further away, it's important that we maintain the control and balance of descending down to deal with the football. And that comes from the K technique here. So the knee that's bent, that is where we get the control that allows us to descend down at the appropriate rate and maintain the balance to deal with the football. If we don't have that, we essentially fall forward and just hope we deal with the ball. We've got no control. We can't stay up a little bit longer. We can't descend quicker. Gravity is in full control. We're not. So it's important, whichever knee you decide to drop, that you maintain that control by stepping a little bit forward. So a little bit forward to get that forward momentum, maintain the descent to the ball, and that's where you get the control from. And the last uh, outcome that we're going to talk about when it comes to dealing with bouncing shots is the situation where you've got the space behind you and the time to drop away, get away from where the ball bounces, and then you get more time to react to whatever the bounce does. So we need to be quick with the movements, but most importantly, as the ball bounces and pitches in front of you, you need to be set with your body weight forward. So we need to stop that backward movement and return to having our momentum going forward. Now, of course, if you're on your goal line, there's no space behind you. If the shot's hit with a lot of venom, you haven't got the time. So, you know, you've got to choose or you've got to identify when this is appropriate. But it's a great way of dealing with bouncing shots. If you can just drop away, react to the bounce, it's a very comfortable way to deal with the ball.